So have you heard the news? Of course you have. Rates are down and home prices are up and you guys are absolutely killing it in the market. Has COVID changed the way you do business? Of course it's changed. Look, we're doing a Zoom call. But please know our teams, both O'Kelly and Sorhan and Shelter, remain focused on you and your clients. Even in the face of the mass refinance mania, here at Shelter, 70% of our team's business is purchase driven. Mm. And we close those loans 99.6% on time. Beautiful. You know the industry average is 76%. Mm. We close 99.6% on time. So what's new? FHA is back down to a 620 credit score for us. That is phenomenal. Jumbo, of course, is back. And it's getting stronger every single day. And we're hopes that the 10% down option will be right around the corner. Now, self-employed borrowers, they remain a little bit of a challenge in the face of COVID. But if we get there early enough with you guys, let us get their income certified to the new underwriting uh, standards and criteria that are set forth because of COVID. Please let either one of us know, Kathy, Stanley, Matt, we're here and love being part of your KW family. We hope you guys have a great meeting and thank you as always for your partnership. Andy, back to you. Thanks, Jim. I appreciate yeah, that. And we appreciate you always being um, a great partner and great representative for Shelter and uh, love you guys. So thank you. Dave, uh, I you've heard it. We've got uh, a lot of, <laughs> A lot of great support from vendors, and we've got right now, looks like we've got 68 people in the room. It's all yours, my friend. Take it away. All right. Thank you. It's great to be here. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. Thank you for bringing me in. Thank you for the, to the sponsors for being partners with us. That's an important thing in Keller Williams. We believe in partnership. You know, one of the things Gary challenged us coming, uh, actually before this COVID thing even hit, he was talking to the leaders saying, you know, our company is at 11% market share, clearly the biggest in North America, biggest in the world. But we, I believe he said we can get to 20% market share. Now I didn't, no one was predicting what this going to, this pandemic was going to hit, but I'll bet you, cause I've been around the, the country now for the last four, four months and the activity that Keller Williams is doing is amazing. And so I think we may come out of this with a higher market share than we went into it. And one of the reasons is, uh, Andy, because of you and your team, because we believe in local leadership and local connection and relationship. So that means we are a place where our agents can come. We call them market centers, but I call them energy centers. It's where they can come and plug in and power up and go after their goals. And we have this synergy. I know a lot of offices that have actually gone out with attorneys and gotten special COVID addendums to do with their sellers so that they could actually show the property and do those kind of things that the, that the government was trying to prevent them from doing. So there's this power of synergy. Now, uh, wh what I wanna talk about today is this whole idea of how we represent ourselves and how we increase our power at, to get listings. Why list with me is, is the topic. And as you know, Andy, that you know, I've been in the real estate business over 30 years. Uh, had a great run with Keller Williams for 12 years and got to build with Gary Keller and Mo Anderson, this, the foundations of this company, uh, and, and, to, um, uh, and, and to really help us uh, build Keller Williams University and, and teach agents how to really be effective in their selling. Now, let, let me tell you a little bit about my story, because for most of the early years of my life, I was in higher education. I worked, I got a master's degree. I worked on a doctorate. I was teaching at a college level and being an administrator. And then I had this opportunity to get in the world of business and to get into real estate. Uh, and I had never, well, actually at the beginning, I wasn't in real estate. I was with a graphic arts company and I was VP of sales and marketing. And the reason I say this is because I didn't understand what selling and marketing was all about. And so a friend of mine, I'm learning based and I want to honor those people that are on this call because it means you're learning based and Gary Keller believes and I agree with him that the highest achievers are learning based. They take more opportunities to learn uh, and they put more time in on their learning and practice 
uh, and building their skill than anyone else, even though you would think they have less time, but they make time for this. So thank you for being here with me uh, on this call. And so I'm a learning based guy. So a friend of mine said the Dale Carnegie Institute has a sales course. Why don't you go take it? And I took it and wow, I learned fundamentally that selling is a profession, that there are skills involved that, that most people don't have, and that there are ways to do it effectively. Now, I will tell you, just as a foundation, we call this the power of your words, that what I learned in, in that Dale Carnegie experience, and I became an instructor for them uh, while I held it my other, my other marketing job, and before I got in real estate, uh, but what I learned from them has powered my entire career. I'm telling you, the chance to become a regional director uh, for Century 21 for three states in the Northeast, the chance to be moved to Texas to combine a mega region out of Dallas of four states, to become a divisional president of seven states uh, for them, and then with, with Gary and Mo to join with Keller Williams because I saw them growing, this little company growing in Austin, and I knew they were the future of real estate. And I got a chance to build Keller Williams University and write the books and do all that with Gary Keller. And what I want to tell you is, at the heart of all of that is what I'm going to teach you today, the power of your words and making effective sales presentations. So let me give you a run at what we're going to do with this time together. Hang on a sec. We're going to get this going. First of all, I want you to become a very powerful listing agent that you have great confidence and, and sellers want to work with you. Number two is I want to help you uh, really articulate your value proposition in a way that you never have before and to master the art of influence. Because see, for me, it's really interesting. It began as selling, but I think it's influencing. And that led me to be a leader of influence, a person of real influence because I could, because I could articulate things. I, I, I got an interesting story. After I had joined Keller Williams, uh, one of my former employees, Christy, uh, from, from Century 21, had gone over to work with Remax in their corporate offices. And she, was, she, she sent me an email in 2002. She said, I just went to a meeting in Atlanta of, of all the Remax leaders, and the whole afternoon was spent on how can we compete with Keller Williams? And she said they were putting pictures up there and then they put your picture up, Dave, and they said, here is the wordmeister. This is the wordmeister <laughs> of Keller Williams because I was doing Wealth Building Wednesdays and helping people articulate why Keller Williams was the best real estate company to be with. And of course, now we're number one in the world. And an amazing, an amazing uh, company uh, and always getting better. So master the art of influence. And then uh, we're going we're gonna to focus on building a really good listing presentation. And I'll tell you why that's important in a second. We're, the, the importance of scripts and dialogues, learning the way to say things. Really great scripts are like poetry or like music. When you learn those words and you can sing those tunes, the way you communicate is even better than it's ever been. But there's a process for it. Uh, and then, of course, all of this will help you build your your true self-confidence, and that will come through to the people you work with, and it'll give you the control of how your career turns out. Now, that's our goal today. Now, here's the thing to understand it. Everything begins with fundamentals. Gary Keller says, in any time, you always go back to the fundamentals. So the thing to understand is why people list with you. They list with you because of your knowledge, your skills, and your attitude. Okay, and there's three things we get paid for knowledge wise contracts, finance and property evaluation. So anything you do, you say, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, by the way, this is uh, selling your home is a very complicated process. There will be by the time we get to the end of closing over 75 pages of legal documents that we'll need to review and understand. Now, by the way, check with your broker. It may be more in your area than 75, might be 80, 90, 100 pages of legal contracts and say, I am a master of those contracts, right? And financing matters, we just heard from, the, from financing, and that is to make sure our buyers are qualified and that, you know, that, that they're getting the right financing in order to buy our home. Uh, and, and then, of course, the real key, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, is that I am a master of the local market. I understand property evaluation. I'm not a licensed appraiser, but I probably do a better job than an appraiser does at determining what your home will sell for and what will make it sell for more. So I'm a master of property evaluation. Now I'm saying this to you as if I were presenting it to a seller, because you want to, but what I'm challenging you to do is make sure that you have mastered 
<clears throat> and are continually mastering these areas of knowledge, contracts, finance, and property evaluation. And then you say, you know, what else? Well, I get paid because I'm a great communicator. I really help people. I really understand them. I listen carefully. They feel they trust me. Uh, and then I, you make effective presentations. Now, by the way, I wanna, I wanna put this in here, why we're focusing so much on presentations. Uh, you know, m one of my mentors early in the game was Mike Ferry. Uh, and we know he's a great teacher of prospecting and very direct stuff. Mr. And Mrs. Seller, when do you plan on moving? Or Mr. And Mrs. Homeowner, when do you plan on moving? Uh, I wanna apply for the job of, of getting your home sold. He's very direct. <clears throat> and so, um, what, I went to a big meeting of his and there's like over 2,000 people in the room and Mike gets up in front and he says, okay, there's three things that make us successful. Prospecting, presenting, and closing. Which one of those do you think is most important? How many think it's prospecting? And of course, almost every hand in the room went up and he went, nope. How many think it's being a great closer, getting them to sign, being persistent, getting them to sign the document? And maybe half the hands went up and he went, nope. It's presenting. Because until you master your presentation, until you can articulate your value proposition and why they should list with you, until you can do that, you won't prospect. You won't have the confidence to prospect. You won't know how to answer their questions or what you're gonna say. And he said, if you don't have a great presentation put together, then you also are not gonna get them to close and agree. So presentation is key. And then the other skill we get paid for is negotiating, developing win-win agreements. And Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I'm a master of negotiating. When we get our first offer, I'm gonna make sure that offer best serves you and I'm gonna do the negotiation needed to make sure your interests are covered in, in the contract of the sale we make. Now, the other thing is attitude. And I think we, we work on our attitude. We work on, of course, being a positive person of positive, but really what, what sets us apart is we have an attitude of intention, assertiveness, and commitment. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, when I determine to do something, things, have, things get done. I'm a person who gets results. I'm outcome oriented. When you list with me, we will get your home sold at the highest possible price in the minimum amount of time with a, with a, with a, a minimum of inconvenience to you. Uh, and then also I'm a person of assertiveness. I stand up, I stand up for my people. I defend them. I don't, I don't back off and I don't care what other people think. I stand up and make sure that, that, that what happens serves you. And then I'm a, a person of commitment. In other words, promises made, promises kept. If I say I'm gonna do something, you can count on it. You can take it to the bank. It's gonna get done. So just, under, just understand, I'm, I'm putting there, there's these three fundamental areas, right? Knowledge, skills, and attitude. You are always working on that to be the, the best professional agent you can be. Because remember, people do business with people they know. People do business with people they like. People do business with people they respect. That's the kind of person that you're building to be. So that underpins your ability. Now, the next thing I learned uh, was that communication is the key. It's the lubricant for being a person of influence, for having people like you, uh, trust you, uh, and follow what you say. And, and out of the Dale Carnegie Institute, we, we learned some fundamentals that have served me, I will tell you, my entire life and entire career. Um, and it's interesting that Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, is in the top 200 of Amazon.com every year. <clears throat> and the book is 80 years old. Why? It's timeless truth. It's like MREA, the book, the book that Gary and Jay and I wrote, The Millionaire Real Estate Agent. It's still number one on Amazon.com in the real estate category after 17 years. Why? Because it's full of timeless truths, well-presented, in a way you can absorb and use. Same thing with Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. And so here's what I learned. And I say this because I think being a good presenter and a good lister <clears throat> starts out with being a good communicator. And, the, and the, his big three are first, don't criticize, condemn, or complain. In other words, no one cares. It, you know, if you've got, and also it sort of shows you a bad attitude. And they may criticize and condemn and complain, but don't buy into that. Don't jump on top of it like, oh, yeah, I think things are really terrible too, right? And by the way, this is good in relationships. Gina and I, Gina and my wife's on board, we are very careful that we don't criticize, condemn, or complain. It's easy to do in a relationship, and it isn't, it isn't what makes it healthy. So don't criticize, condemn, or complain. Number two, give honest, sincere appreciation. Look for things. 
that you can be appreciative of. Thank them for their time of meeting with you. Thank them for them answering your questions. You know, Jim Droz was the number one agent in all of Century 21 for three straight years out of Santa Clarita, California. And he was the most mannerly, soft person that you'd ever want to meet. He'd say, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I appreciate you allowing me into your home. I know this is your private and personal space, uh, but I just want to take a minute to see how I can help you get your home sold. And then he would bring out his, his flip chart, you know, in the, before computers and laptops, you know, he used a flip chart. But before he would put the flip chart on the table, he would put this leather, this leather piece underneath it so that his flip chart wouldn't mar their table. And he said, I learned to park out uh, in the street because one of the sellers, when I asked him why they listed with me, said, well, that other agent we met with, you know, drove his, his Ferrari up into our driveway and left oil, uh, you know, on our driveway. It was just terrible. So he realized you have to be careful not to violate people's territory. He would always let them sit down where they wanted to sit before he sat down. And then he would appreciate them for their time. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for listening. And so give honest, sincere appreciation. Thank you is maybe one of the most powerful phrases ever invented. And then finally, focus on what other people want. Uh, Zig Ziglar said, you will get what you want in direct proportion to the number of people who you help get what they want. So that's our goal, get focusing on what other people want, articulating it, uh, making it happen, uh, being very aware of that and no dollar signs in our eyes. We wanna help them list their property. It's like, it's like funny, um, Sherry Puffer, one of my neatest agents I ever worked with, uh, one of our pioneers for Keller Williams in the Carolinas, in Asheville, North Carolina, she specialized in for sale by owners and expires. And here was her script. I just wanted, I just wanted to do a quick version of this. She'd say, hi, um, Mr. Business Homeowner, uh, this, uh, my name's Sherry Puffer. Uh, I, I want to know, is your home still for sale? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Well, I, I just wanted to help you get it sold. Well, listen, are you a real estate agent? Yes, I am. I'm with Keller Williams. Well, we're not going to list. We're not going to list. We're not going to use a real estate agent. No, nope, we don't want to pay that commission. We can do it ourselves. And you went, oh, that's great. That's fine. Let me, when can I do a little pop by, look at your home and see if I can help you sell it? They go, no, remember, we're not going to list the home. She said, no, no, I understand. I don't want your listing. I want to help you sell your home. What do you mean you want to help her sell her home? Well, that's what I do in life. My commitment is to help homeowners sell their home at the highest price uh, with the minimum of hassle for them. I know, but we're not going to list with you. Well, I understand that, but what would be a good time for me to pop by and see you? Uh, well, why would you do that? Well, you go, because that's my job. I help people sell homes. Some people hire me and pay me. Some people don't. I don't care either way. I help people sell homes. Now, listen to that. Now, she would get typically 10 appointments uh, a week. Uh, she, would, uh, she would go on those and three or four of them would list with her, which is a great track record. Three or four listings a week is amazing. But here's the thing. She, she focused on what they wanted and not what she wanted. And it, it was just powerful. So don't criticize, condemn, or complain. Give honest, sincere appreciation and focus on what other people want. Now, there's six supportive ones. These are just kind of around the edges, but they're really good to incorporate in your selling style. Number one, be genuinely interested in other person. I call it curiosity. Let, you know, Gary Gentry taught me, he said, Dave, I can learn more about a person in half an hour than probably anyone else can. I ask great questions, I listen carefully, they can feel my sincerity, I follow up with other questions, I remember what they've told me. He said, people know that I care about them, I'm genuinely interested in them. No, number two, smile, it's where your energy comes through. <laughs> I know in the, this day and age of wearing masks, we can't read each other's facial uh, expressions, which really is, is difficult now for us. We can, all we get to see are the eyes and those don't always tell us exactly what's going on with the rest of the facial muscles. So that, that's the thing. But anyway, when we're with people or on a Zoom call or something, smile, you know, let your positive energy come through, right? That people love to work with positive, happy people. Remember people's names. Now, this is a big one. I want to, I want to tell you, do not use this phrase, oh, I'm not good at remembering names. Do not say that to yourself. Do not give yourself that reputation to live down to because, because everyone struggles with remembering anything but names for sure. And here's why. 
all of the emotional part of relationship is a right brain thing. The emotions, the connection, the sensitivity, the awareness, even the knowledge of who they are and, and what they've done and that kind of thing. You really know them, but their name is over on the left brain. That's where labels are. That's the na their name and the kid's name and what school they went to and you know what, what uh, college they, they, they went to and, and, and what, where they work. All these labels are over here. So you have to do the work of blending those back together. And that becomes a big challenge for everybody. But here's how you do it. You realize it's important. So the first thing you do when you meet somebody is you, is you ask them their name. And if it's an unusual one, you ask how they spell it and you write it down. You write it down. They will not take offense at that. You write it down. Now, you use it at least two or three times very quickly. Dave, it's great to be here. Thank you. I think, Dave, we're going to be able to help you get your home sold. And Dave, we're going to deal with any of the issues that you have. See, you just use it as because then you get the repetition. Now it's in your brain. Repetition is the mother of skill. Repetition is the mother of mastery. Repetition is the mother of memory. Now, if you didn't get their name in the first few minutes or you got it but forgot it, ask them again. Say, oh, I just had a little brain moment here. Uh, I forgot your name. Right? Let, me get, let me get it down. It's better than trying to go on knowing you don't know their name and you can't use it. So that's better to face up and, and do it. So remember people's names. Make it part of your game to really be good as much as you can with names and you'll find your skill gets better. The next one, encourage others to talk about themselves. In other words, let them do most of the talking. Talk, just talk in terms of what, they, what they're interested in and what's on their mind and what's, what's there. And talk about their interests. What are they interested in? And here's the danger zone. A lot of people think that if you have the same interests they have, there'll be a bond. Not true, not true. Because what people do is they say, oh, uh, tell me, what do you like to do for your fun time? Oh, I play golf. Oh, you play golf? So do I. I play golf. Great. What's your handicap? Mine's a 9.2. Great. Are you a member of a country club? I'm a member of blank blank, right? What are the best courses you've ever played? Yeah, I played Pebble Beach. See, you get into the me too. And me too does not build bonding. Me too builds competition. And so just make sure that that you don't do the me too's that you, if you, if you know golf, for example, then ask them, say, that's great. How long have you been playing? What do you love about the game? It's kind of a crazy game, isn't it? What courses are the best courses that you paid? What are some of the great shots you've hit? You know, just be interested in what they do or if they love movies, what movies are your favorite ones, whatever, but don't tell them what your favorite ones are. That's not the, the goal. The goal is for you to be interested in them. And then finally, make them feel important. Say, you know, you're the boss. You know, I'm here for the job, for, to apply for the job of getting your home sold. Uh, so you're the boss, you're the decision maker. And by the way, and then you can compliment them for the way they've raised their kids or what, the way they have their household or, or the jobs they have, whatever. Oh, that's impressive. Wow, you, you have a doctorate in that. That's, that's, that's impressive, right? So do it sincerely. Make them feel important. So those are, the, those are the supportive six. Be genuinely interested, smile, remember people's names, encourage them to do most of the talking, talk in terms of their interests, not yours, and make others feel important. Now, when we put all these nine things, the, the, the three and the six, and that becomes our, 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 our pathway to relationships and communication, we are powerful, right? We are powerful. Now, the other thing I learned from Dale Carnegie was selling is a process. We're taking the buyers through a process. And in Dale Carnegie, we learned it's attention, interest, conviction, desire, and close. In other words, we want to get their attention. We want to develop their interest by asking great questions. We want to make a great presentation that convinces them that we can get the job done. We want them to feel the desire and the need to do it right away. And then we ask for the order, right? Now, I say selling is four, is four C's, right? It's curiosity, connection, conviction, and commitment. It goes both ways. At the beginning, you want to be curious about them, but you want them to be curious about you. Then you ask a series of questions and you get connected to their needs and what they want and they know that you know it. And then you do your presentation, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, let me take a minute to tell you how I work and why you should list with me. And then we go through that. And we're gonna talk a little bit because that's the heart of a sales presentation. And then finally we shake hands and make a commitment. All right, let's get after it. I'm gonna get this home sold. and. 
you know, and there's going to be things that I do and things that I ask you to do. So those are the four steps of selling. And you say to yourself, where am I with these people in the sales process? Are we still in curiosity? Are we building connection? Is it time for me to, to build a conviction on their part that I can do it? And are we ready to close and make a commitment? Now, here's what underpins it all. Uh, it's the ability to master scripts and dialogues. As I said earlier, scripts are the poetry. And the key is you have to memorize. Now, the, the challenge is that we're in an age that has lost the ability, uh, the great ability to memorize things. Uh, the reason is because everything we have is right at our hand, our, our, our cell phone, our computer, Google, uh, whatever, we can look things up. We don't need to, phone numbers, we don't need to remember things, how to get some to some uh, buddy's house. We have all these devices that allow us not to use our memory. Nothing wrong with that, very powered. But here's the thing, remember back when the world was, you didn't even have print, printing presses. So people had to remember things. All knowledge was verbal and, and, and memorized. Uh, and those people had massive memories. Now we have the skill. This is what I wanna say to you. Memorization is a muscle. It can work, you can make it work, you can learn how to memorize things and you want to. You want to do that. You want to memorize scripts. Now here's the way it goes. Gary Keller and I built this little paradigm. You memorize, you internalize, you customize and you capitalize. And so memorize means you get it and you memorize it exactly as it's written because great scripts are like poetry. They're written that way for a reason. They have a rhythm, they have the right words that, that empower them. Uh, and then we internalize it, meaning we feel the emotional connection to those words and we start to say them as really as naturally as if they are ours because they do become us. And then we only use that which is appropriate to the situation. Some, some things like handle the sale of your home, right? I learned this from Linda McKissick. She said, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, when you hire me to handle the sale of your home, now, when you hire me, it's assumptive, beautiful, when you hire me to handle the sale of your home. See, not to list it, sell it, market it. That's all, that's all mediocre. It's to handle the sale of your home. That's fiduciary. So we should always be using that phrase. You know, my job is to, hand, is, is to handle the sale of your home. Um, and then we internalize that we get, and we use the part of it that matters, right? In other words, there will be some conditions in which one script really works and is useful, we'll, we're going to run through a bunch of them. And then there's other situations where you really don't need that. And capitalize, of course, means that you, you win. So one of the things, I, I did a, a session yesterday, and one of the, uh, of this, of Why List With Me, and one of the agents wrote and said, you know, I'm a jazz and cabaret singer, and I memorize all my songs word for word, and then I internalize them and get an emotional feel before I sing them. And I would never go on stage and try and wing it with a song that I hadn't memorized, learned, rehearsed, and gotten the feel for. And I went, wow, that's it. Great performers, actors, you know, they all master the exact script and then they can deliver it in a believable way and be the character they want. And, in, in, and that's the same challenge that we face. So my challenge to you is work on memorization. One of the fun things I did, I got a chance, I reconnected with Gary Keller a year and a half ago when he stepped in as CEO and he invited me back in uh, to really be part of the game and to go to RD meeting, regional director meetings, and also to be doing training all over the country. And I've done over 70 Zoominars like this one for offices around the country. And that's fun, I love it. I love this company, I love being back in it. Um, but you know, one of the things that he and I realized in this was that, is that we have to commit to memorizing things. And one of the things I had a chance to do was to be a breakout speaker at family reunion. I hadn't been there for 10 years. And uh, I was in the biggest room, the biggest breakout room, 3,600 seats. And I was behind the stage, uh, miking up. And I, here, here's what I figured. I hadn't been on the stage in, at Keller Williams for 10 years. So many new agents had joined us. I knew that they would introduce me, I'd run out onto stage and there'd be like 200 people scattered all over 3,600 seats, right? No, standing room only and, uh, and they had to turn people away and we had a great session. But one of the things I did, they'll get a kick out of this, uh, is that I had them stand and memorize the seven habits of highly effective people. So I would challenge you to pick some things that are worth kind of just memorizing, just for the exercise of memory. 
So I had them all stand. Within 10 minutes, they knew the seven habits of highly effective people. As I said to them, it's only seven. It's a famous book. These seven habits are supposed to be really wonderful. And there's only 22 words. All the seven habits only add up to 22 words. So we ought to be able to memorize it. And we did. And they got a kick out of it because they really realized that they could memorize that. And um, I, I've done this for myself. For example, we're coming, we're coming into COVID. And one of the greatest poems I've ever enjoyed is Rudyard Kipling's If. And it's very good about perspective on things. And it goes like this. If you can keep your head while all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself while others doubt you and yet make allowance for their doubting too, if you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, not dealing lies or being hated, not give way to hating and neither talk too good nor act too wise. If, if you can dream and not make dreams your master, if you can think and not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. And I'll skip to the end. Uh, it, it, it says, if you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, then yours is the world and everything that's in it. And more than that, life's battle you'll have won. Now, the fun thing is to memorize it. And the fun thing is to kind of use it. So give yourself some memory exercises just for fun, in addition to scripts and dialogues, which we're gonna talk about. So here's the thing that, that we that we need to understand is professionals practice all the time. In other words, I, I read a wonderful book called The Warrior Elite about the training of Navy SEALs. And it said Navy SEALs spend three much three times more training than they do out in the field. They'll they'll train for 18 months and then they'll go on deployment for six. And I know professional athletes spend hours and hours and hours of practicing their skills, shooting baskets, hitting golf balls, whatever it is versus the time they spend in competition. And I think our greatest agents spend more time practicing their listing presentation, practicing their scripts and dialogues, practicing their, their handling of objections, all of that before they go out and get in the game and really play it, right? Just like the singer who said, I, I rehearse and I memorize and I get it before I go on stage. I'm not winging it. So what I want to talk with you about and what I want to guide us through are some scripts and dialogues and strategies for building our listing presentation. Because when, as Mike Ferry said, when you build a powerful listing presentation, you will be excited about going out and prospecting and asking people to do business with you. You will be excited about that. Uh, you'll want to do it because you'll feel very confident about it. So the whole listing presentation is about these, these five things, setting the stage, making the presentation. And by the way, one of, see, when I went to the Dale Carnegie sales course, the goal at the end of the 12 weeks was that everyone would give a, a uh, orchestrated sales presentation to everyone in the class. That's how you graduated. Uh, and so the heart of being a salesperson is mastering your, your sales presentation. So one is setting the stage, making the presentation, highlighting the key benefits. I'm going to talk about that. There's a whole sense of, of how you make presentations by focusing on benefits, then dealing with pricing and staging, and then explaining very clearly how commissions work and why your commission is, in, is, is important and realistic. Now, let's begin setting the stage. So one of the fun uh, scripts that I learned from Mike Ferry is called the one minute listing presentation. And it goes like this, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I've written down three very important questions. May I ask them? One, do you absolutely have to sell your home? Okay. Two, uh, are you willing to price it to sell? Okay. And three, would you like me to handle the sale for you? Now, if you get three yeses, you're done. A one minute listing presentation. If they go, yes, yes, yes. You're, you're done. You're in. Now let's, okay, let's get working on the paperwork and I'll answer any of your questions along the way. See, now, by the way, um, you, you don't, don't get tempted into answer to respond to their answers other than to say, thank you for sharing that or thank you. Right? So if you said, do you absolutely have to sell your home? Well, you know, not really. No, we love it here. We're just seeing how much we might get for it if we put it on the market. Okay. Thank you. Number two, are you willing to price it to sell? Well, we, we have to get at least a million too. We have to get a million too. And maybe you know that, you know, that it's only gonna sell for 950. You go, okay, great, thank you. And would you like me to handle a sale for you? Well, maybe we're interviewing four agents. Okay, so, and you get, okay, well, let's get started. 
See, what, what each of the answer to their question is telling you is where you stand with them. Number one is their motivation. Do they absolutely have to sell? You're going to find out. Uh, are they willing to price it to sell? Well, you're going to find out. Do they understand how the market works? If they are, have an exaggerated view of what it's worth, we know we got some education to do with them. And would you like me to handle the sale for you? If the answer is yes, we're going after it. But if the answer is I'm interviewing other people, your idea is to is to be so good in the presentation, they're not going to interview those other people. But these, so the one minute listing presentation it says, if you get three yeses, you've got a one minute listing presentation. If you get other answers, then you're going to go into your regular presentation, but with a lot more perspective on, on the work that you have to do in that presentation. That makes sense? Now, there's another way to set the stage. See, a lot of great selling is the way you set their expectations. Here's another one. It's called the three outcomes. Again, from Mike Ferry. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, at the end of our meeting, one of three things will happen. One, you'll decide to hire me to handle the sale of your home. Number two, you'll decide not to list with me. Or three, I will decide not to take your listing. Now, any of those three is okay with me. Does that make sense? See, whoa, you've just taken the pressure. Well, you've done two things. You put the pressure on because you said, we're going to make a decision at the end of our meeting. So right away, you've got their attention. But you've also said, and I don't care if I get the listing. It isn't that you don't care. It's that you're willing to walk from it if it's not right. And one of the things that Mike Ferry teaches is one of the best things you can do is fire a seller. If they're being tough, if they're not being very good, if they don't seem to appreciate what you're doing, say, Mr. Mr. Seller, I think this isn't working. Let's just be friends part ways, and I'm going to let you out of the listing. And I would recommend you go interview some other people. Just do that. Because why stay in business with someone who's going to make things, your life difficult for you? Uh, so anyway, here's the point of this. It gets them focused and it, and it relaxes the idea that you are in need of the listening, right? That you, you're desperate. Even if you are, by the way, don't let them see you sweat. The point is, you've got to be willing to walk. Here's the thing, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, let's go in here. At the, now, the, you can also start to create a sense of urgency. Mr. And Mrs. Seller, at the end of our meeting, which should take no more than 45 minutes, one of three things will happen. See, right of way, you've put a time frame in it. Whoa, 45 minutes, I guess we better pay attention. And that's what you want. You want their attention. If you go willy-nilly into a, a presentation and they don't know how long it's going to go and all that, they may, their mind may be drifting somewhere else. Because, oh, he's going to go on and on and on, right? So just, this is a powerful one. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, at the end of our meeting, which will probably be about 45 minutes, one of three things will happen. You will decide to have me handle the sale of your home, or you will decide not to list with me, or I'll decide not to take your listing. Okay, any of those things is okay with me. Does that make sense? So again, just a great way to set the scene. Now here's another way. I learned this from Floyd Wickman. It's called the safe island. It's letting them know what's gonna happen next. A lot, of a lot of times we dive into our sales presentation and they don't know where it's going, what's going to happen. They're not sure where we are in the, in the process. And maybe they're kind of looking at their watch or wondering, gee, you know, where's this going? So this is called setting the stage, the safe island, so they know where we're going. And it also is teaching us another memory technique. See, one memory technique is kinesthetic learning. That's what I use with the, uh, the seven habits of highly effective people or the thing I did for 12 years for teaching people the Y4C2Ts. Because if, if we have nine principles in Keller Williams, we ought to know what they are. And I would teach them, and I use the kinesthetic way of memorizing things. This one's called stacking. And that's when you have a presentation to make or you're teaching a class, one of the best things you can do for yourself is build a stack of objects that trigger what the next part of the presentation is going to be. And you're, that's a great way to remember things. So for example, let me just use this. Here, I want you to picture this stack. On the bottom are the letters B and the number four, B4, dash, B4, in pink, bright pink, B4. On top of that is a stopwatch that only goes one minute, a one minute stopwatch. Above that are four steps, numbered one, two, three, four. Okay, steps. At the top step is a whole bunch of, of question marks all bunched together. On top of the question marks is a market basket, like a grocery basket, but you think market basket, you know, like you put groceries in. On top of the market basket, tilted on the handle, is, is a jail cell, meaning a window with a prisoner in it and bars, but you think jail cell. 
And then above the jail cell coming out of it is a spiral staircase. So we, rem we, we remind ourselves, what's the stack? On the bottom is B4, then one minute, then four steps, then question marks, then market basket, then jail cell, and finally spiral staircase. Okay, now listen to this quick presentation and see how I follow that stack. So Mr. and Mrs. Seller, before we begin, may I take a minute to tell you how I work? Basically, I use a four-step process. First, I'm gonna ask you a series of questions so I can get a clear picture of what you want to accomplish and how I can help. Second, I'm gonna give you enough market information for you to make a rational decision about the price to place on your property. Third, I'm gonna honestly sell you on the benefits of working with me and my company and how we get the results that we do. And finally, if you decide and when you decide to hire me to handle the sale of your home, I will tell you step by step all the things I will do to cause your home to sell. Does that sound good? Let's get started. Okay, so you've given them the flow of what's going to happen. Before. Now, by the way, you may have five steps. Basically, I use a five-step process. I'm going to show you in a second a little bit more than that, a 10-step process. But the point is, you tell them the process, and, 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 and then you guide them through it. And now they know what's going to happen, which makes it a safe island. Now, here's the fundamental of selling. This is kind of the fundamental truth right here in a sales presentation. It's called facts, benefits, feelings. Right, that's how everything goes. Here's what I do, the fact. Here's what you get, the benefit. And here's how it makes you feel, the feeling. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I'm gonna give you enough information so that you can place the right price on your property, which means you will maximize the money that you're gonna get from this sale and you can feel satisfied that you got the best that you could get, right? Or Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I'm going to communicate with you on a regular basis, at least once a week, so that you will have a sense of what's going on with the transaction and you will know and you will get all your questions answered. And this will give you that peace of mind to know that I'm listening to you, that you're being, I'm paying attention to what you need and you know what's going on, right? You see how that goes? So think about all the things you do for somebody, the fact of what you do, and then the benefit, always think in terms of benefits, what they get from it, and then the feeling it leaves them with. That's the most powerful one. I mean, that, that really is, and you will feel this. You'll feel peace of mind and relaxation. You'll feel respected and listened to. You'll have confidence and security to know that I am protect your interest all the way through closing. Uh, you'll have the satisfaction and well-being of getting the best price possible and moving smoothly on to your next home. Uh, you'll have the happiness and joy because I make, I make this process enjoyable and fun uh, uh, and, and exciting the way I do it, right? So just be able to talk facts, benefits, and feelings. Fundamental truth on this slide. By the way, uh, if you would like a copy of all of these slides that I'm, I'm presenting, here's what I want you to do. Write me, dave at kw.com. I'm not gonna send these out to everybody who's on the call, or I'm not gonna have Laura Donna do that. that that's, that's socialism. I want people who are here and are focused on getting out of getting what they want out of this to, to ask for it. So I want you to write Dave at kw.com and say, Dave, please send me your presentation and your, your list of favorite scripts, because there's a lot of scripts I really love that aren't in this presentation today, particularly ones for lead generation. Send me your favorite scripts. Um, and all you have to do to get earn this is tell me two or three ahas that you got from the presentation. What were two or three things that stood out for you in this time that we've had together? Okay, just say that. So it's Dave at kw.com, two or three ahas that you've got. Give me that feedback. I like that. Uh, and, uh, and then I will send you uh, the, the full presentation plus Dave's favorite scripts, okay? And I know Laura Donna is having this recorded so you can also listen in to this again and have, have that in front of you. So repetition is the, is the mother of mastery. Remember that. So sales presentation. Now here's the core. I'm just going to see some people complicate sales presentations. Some people, you know, when somebody says, why should I list with you? You're thinking, oh, I've done this many deals. I've been in the business this long. I've mastered this. I have these certifications, you know, all that stuff. Well, that's okay to have those there. 
but here's the one I'd use. Here's the one I'd use. Mr. Minnesota, there's three reasons you should really list with me. One, you can trust me. Two, I will answer all your questions. And three, I will protect you all the way to closing. Does that make sense? Would that be important? See, it's just those three. Because people's decisions to list with you is emotional, not rational. It's not all the number of items and number of deals you've done and all that stuff. What, you, what, you, what your list price is, no. They wanna trust you, they wanna know you're gonna to listen to them and respond to them and they want to be taken care of, protected, all the way to closing. So Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I want you to memorize this. Everyone listening in, there are really three fundamental reasons to list with me. One, you can trust me. Two, I will answer all your questions. And three, I will protect you all the way to closing. Now. You can expand on these. I don't recommend that necessarily you do, but if you want to, you can't say, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, there are really three reasons to list with me. Number one, you can trust me, right? I do what I say I'm gonna do. Promises made, promises kept. Anything that, that I said I'm gonna do, you can take it to the bank. Number two is, I'll answer all your questions and I'm available all the time. I'll get right back to you uh, and I'm a professional, so, I know what I know and I know what I don't. If I know the answer, you're gonna get it from me. And if I don't know the answer, I've got this great team at Keller Williams behind me and I'm gonna, I'll get the best answer for you, but I'll always answer your questions anytime. And three, I will protect you all the way from contract, from, from the listing to the contract, to evaluating those offers, to making sure that no one takes advantage of you, to make sure that nothing goes wrong, to make sure that nothing's written in a way that hurts you. I will protect you and your interests all the way through closing until your home is sold. Okay, so see, you can expand them, but the thing is, I think it's just as easy to say, you can trust me, I'll answer all your questions, and I will protect you all the way through closing. Power comes in threes, and power comes in short phrases. Now, you can also then say, because someone says, say, no, there's lots of things I do to cause your home to sell. How much detail would you like me to share with you? And then you say, you know what, Dave, we don't need all the details. We get it. You know, we love, we love the idea of working with you. Let's get started. And you say, well, great. And I'll inform you all the way along the way. Or someone says, well, you know, really, I would like to know all the things you're going to do. Well, there's two places you can go for magic. MREA, page 95, the 10 most important things you do for sellers. And uh, MREA, page 151, the 15 ways that you market their home. So, for example, if they ask you, you could say, well, let me just really quickly run through with you all the things I do. First, I do a full needs analysis. I'll ask a lot of questions to get a clear picture of what you want, what your priorities are, and how we're going to go after it. Get it done, right? Number two, we'll really do a very detailed analysis of the market, what's pricing, what pricing has worked, and the, and the kind of price that will get you the maximum return. Uh, as you sell your home. Number three is we'll review your property and look at it. Do, if there are repairs we need to make, we'll make them. I'll help you get them done. Uh, we'll stage it so we compete beautifully against all the other homes that are in our category. And then number four, I'm going to build a marketing strategy with you. There's 14 steps I follow, 14 things I do to cause your home to sell. By the way, we're going to do all that and have it all in place before we put your home on the market so that we draw the best offers uh, that compare maybe multiple offers. And number five is I'm going to, our, my, my real professional business starts when we get an offer because I have to evaluate it, make sure it serves your interest, make sure that buyer is qualified and can deliver uh, before we do anything that takes your home even slightly off the market. We're going to evaluate those offers. Now, if need be, I will negotiate that offer. We'll do counter offers. We'll get it right. We'll make sure the contract meets your requirements uh, fully before we enter into it. And then, as a follow-up to the contract, I'll help you in terms of your work list and vendors and things we need to do to maybe coordinate repairs or, or do things that are required under the contract. And then eight, I'm gonna review all of those hundreds, you know, 85 pages of, of legal documents to make sure that the mortgage company is doing their job, the title company is doing their job, and we're getting you to closing and I'm protecting your interests all the way. And then at closing, I'll be there with you to give you the confidence to know that it's okay to sign these documents uh, and we can move on. And then actually our relationship doesn't end there because I care about everything that has to do with you and will help you make your move if necessary. In fact, early on, I can help you get a, 
uh, a good agent where you're moving to find the home you're looking for. But we'll do that earlier, but there are post-closing things that, that I do, and including helping you move and also giving you the information you need for your tax filing. So you see how that works? So by the way, does all that make sense to you? You have questions on any of that? Okay, wonderful. So one is, so you can go as detailed as you want, and there's a track record to, to a track to follow on right there, those 10 things that you do. Now, there's a few issues that you want to express to people that make you better and more and, and uniquely strong compared to other real estate agents. One is that you're a fiduciary. Gary Keller believes, and this company is built on the belief that a fiduciary agent should be in every transaction that protects the interests of the seller or the buyer uh, and make sure the right things happen, that they make the right decisions and take the right actions at the moments of truth in the transaction. But a lot of people don't know what fiduciary means. So we don't kind of, kind of use our own uh, industry language. And here's a script that allows you to express that. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I am licensed by the state of Georgia to represent you in the sale of your home. And I will always place your interests above the interests of all other parties, including my own. And I'm committed to get you the highest price in the shortest time with a minimum of inconvenience to you. See, that's the fundamental sales presentation, particularly those last two. Committed to get you the highest price in the shortest time with a minimum of inconvenience to you. Now, but the fiduciary part is the part, right? You go to authority. I am licensed by the state of Georgia. So right up here, I'm, you know, I'm endorsed to represent you in the sale of your home. Not to represent all sellers, no, to represent you in the sale of your home. I will always place your interest above the interest of all other parties, oh, including my own interest. I put you ahead of me. And I'm committed to get you the highest price in the shortest time with a minimum of inconvenience to you. Now, one of the things Linda McKissick said, she's an icon in Keller Williams, right? She went from failing out of real estate in 1991 to seventh level in 1999, eight years. And seventh level is what we talk about in MREA. It's where you have a business you've built under your name, your brand, your standards of service, and you're no longer doing the real estate sales, right? So the, the, in 1999, the McKissick Group, under Linda's ownership, uh, did 350 closed transactions. Uh, she had four admins, five buyer specialists, two listing specialists, and a manager running the whole thing under her supervision. But she only worked four to six hours a week. She was raising her family. And so that's what the, pr the promise of the seventh level is. Uh, in MREA. But here's what she said, Dave, here's what launched my career. She said, I learned that you had to ask for business and not be attached to the answer. Interesting comment. I said, tell, tell me what you mean. She said, well, you know, when you ask for business, would you, would you like to list your home? You'll get no's and you'll get yeses, probably get more no's than yeses. But your goal is to get yeses. So you just have to go through the no's. She said, like a major league baseball player, you go to bat 10 times, make seven outs, what are you? You know, an all-star, multimillionaire, Hall of Fame, because you're batting 300. So she said there's some sports where there's more failure in a sense short-term than there is success. And in real estate, that's clearly one of them. Uh, so you just need to ask, 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 ask. Great, great wisdom. The second thing she said is, you have to learn to state the obvious with emotional power. And she said, I, I was just kind of one of those matter of fact, tell it like it is people. And I realized all of a sudden I was boring that I wasn't very good with my sellers uh, because I didn't articulate things well. And then I, she said, I started to learn the power of mastering scripts and dialogues and saying things in a more powerful way, a more emotionally powerful way. So, and she said, hey, let me give you an example. She said, I, I would say this to, to my sellers, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, when you hire me to handle the sale of your home, I will immediately tomorrow morning notify all the other realtors in the area that your home is on the market, its best features and why they should bring their qualified buyers to see it. Would you like me to do that? And they go, oh yeah, that'd be great, Linda. But see, other agents go, well, we'll put it in the MLS and then we'll put a sign in the yard. You know, that's mediocre selling. What she's doing is taking a reality, which a normal reality, which we all take for granted, the MLS, and she's telling them the power of the MLS and her use of it. So, right, I will immediately tomorrow morning tell all the other realtors that your home is on the market, its best features, and why they should bring their qualified buyers to see it. Powerful script. Now, 
Another one I learned from Althea Osborne, uh, who, by the way, had a wonderful marketing technique. I want to share this with you. So when she was bidding her, build, building her career, what she, what she did was she went out to these young tech firms that were just opening up in Austin. And she'd go in and meet the owner or the entrepreneur, the founder, and she'd say, hi, Jim, um, I'm Althea Osborne. Uh, I, I would like, I, I see what you're building with your new uh, tech company. I saw the article I read in the business journal. Very exciting. Uh, I just would like to be part of your recruiting team. And they'd go, what do you mean, Althea, my recruiting team? And she'd go, well, I know. Uh, that you're wanting to get very uh, good people to move here to Austin to be with your company. And so when they come in for an interview, I'm happy to meet with them and give them an area tour and talk about what a great place this is to live, have them talk to some people maybe that move from where they move from and why they like Austin. I just want to help you bring them here. Uh, and by the way, if you decide to hire them and they come here, I'll even, I'll even help them uh, find a home. Isn't that interesting? See, she was more interested in what they needed than what she needed or wanted. So this was really important and it built her career. I mean, she, she was the number one agent in all of Austin and all of those techies, you know, became millionaires and they, they started to buy big homes. And so she would list one of the big homes and she told me about this and they would say, well, so Althea, where are you going to advertise our home? And she said, well, let me educate you about how real estate really works. See, there's a power phrase right there. Let me educate you. Don't assume they know what you know. You're the pro. Let me educate you about how real estate really works. Ads don't sell homes. Realtors do. And I'm already investing half of my commission as an incentive for the best real estate agents to bring their qualified buyers to your home. And as your agent, I will never waste your money. And I certainly wouldn't waste my own. Isn't that powerful? See, it gives perspective to, which is, by the way, this is all true, you know, but you don't have to go into the only, the only reason people advertise homes is to get more buyers and sellers and all those things we know are true. You just tell them how it works, Mr. and Mrs. Seller. Let me educate you about how real estate really works. Ads don't sell homes, realtors do. And I'm already investing half of my commission. Now that we just take that as the co-broke. But by the way, that whole commission is owed to you. And you've agreed under the MLS or any other way to offer half of it. Your broker has offered half of it to the other broker for, the, for whoever brings the buyer. Uh, that's just how it works. But let's not just give it away. Let's say that's the power of it. Ads don't sell homes. Realtors do. I'm already investing half my commission as an incentive for the best agents to bring their qualified buyers. Notice how that language, the best agents, bring their qualified buyers. See, that's why the scripts have magic. This is written in that poetry of stating things in their most powerful way. Best agents bringing their qualified buyers to your home. And then as your agent, I will never waste your money. And I certainly wouldn't waste my own. Now, a lot of people in the old days, they'd say, well, I've never heard of Keller Williams. Like when we were small, two or 3,000 people, or we were brand new in an area, even like Atlanta. I mean, we're the we're the best dominant real estate company in the greater Atlanta area. But there was a time when we were just little and small and people would say, you know, I've never heard of Keller Williams. You say, well, let me, and I taught a script that said, let me tell you about Keller Williams. Keller Williams is the newest, most innovative, fastest growing real estate company in America. Right. And, and that, and they go, Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So now though, it's changed because now we are the big player. And so I, I would say, if they say, well, you know, tell me a little bit about, this Keller Williams thing. I'm not that familiar. So great. Let me tell you about Keller Williams. Keller Williams is the largest, most innovative and deeply respected real estate company in the world. And I'm with Keller Williams because at Keller Williams, I'm a partner in the business. I get to share in the profits. I have a say in all the decisions. And more importantly than that, I am empowered to do whatever it takes to best serve you. Now, by the way, that's how we are built. The, we believe the agent is king. They run their business the way they want to, legally, of course. And they are empowered. Uh, and they are partners in the business. But see, this is a way to get them to understand why that relationship between you and Keller Williams is so special and brings an advantage to them. Let me tell you about Keller Williams. Keller Williams is the largest and most innovative and deeply respected real estate company in the world. Uh, and I'm with Keller Williams because at Keller Williams, I really am a partner in the business. I get to share in the profits. 
I have a say in all the decisions. And more important, I am empowered to do whatever it takes to best serve you. So really work on, really work on mastering that script. Now, pricing. Someone says, well, you know what? We need to get a million, a million, over a million for our house. So we need, and you go, wonderful. I am gonna help you get the most possible price for your house so you can net the most as you move on to your next one. That's my number one commitment. Now, here's the challenge we all face, you and I, because I'm with you in this game. The market's gonna determine what our home sells for. It's, we're, we're competing against other homes in a similar category to ours. We're competing with them on price, we're competing them on staging. And we have to compete or we'll be just stuck and we won't sell it. Now, by the way, I just wanna remind you, there's two markets out there. There are homes that are on the market, they're listed, but they're overpriced and, they're, and they don't look very good and they're not getting many showings and they're getting no offers. Then there are homes that are in the market and those homes are priced right uh, and they look good. Now, I just wanna tell you as your agent, my commitment is not just to get your listing and put you on the market. My, my commitment is to make sure you are in the market. Does that make, up, that make sense to you? And by the way, there's a window of opportunity for every listing. We're gonna get our best offer in the first 10 days to two weeks that you're there because you're fresh and you're new. All the agents and their buyers are focused on you coming into the market. They're gonna come by. And by the way, if they come by and feel that it's overpriced or it doesn't in, not in good shape or needs repairs, it's gonna have a bad first impression. And when a home has a bad first impression, that lasts. Agent, you know, a buyer, they're, they're going through a list of available homes with a buyer and say, no, not that one. Doesn't look very good. It's overpriced, right? Now, you don't know that's going on, but that's going on. So what I want to make sure for you as your agent, that we take full advantage of that window of opportunity and we do all of our marketing and we get our home in the best shape and we price it right and we come into the market and we get multiple offers and we sell at the highest possible price. What we don't want to do is chase the market. Right? We don't, what, what the research shows is if you come on and then change the price later or do repairs later, you will be chasing the market. You have lost your advantage. So we're, I'm going to make sure as your agent, we come out of the blocks with all the advantage, all the power on your side to get the best possible price there is. Does that make sense? Good. Let's get at it. Right? Now, here's the kind of the a final technical one. So, so Dave, uh, would you cut your commission? And you go, wow, I understand that you want good value. I think that's good. You're a shopper. And I think people who shop and make sure that they pay the, pay the right price and get value, uh, that's very important. So I honor that. But here's the thing. Many people just don't understand what happens to the commission. So let me kind of explain it. Half of it, 3%, goes to the company or agent that brings us the qualified buyer. It's almost like a marketing fee, right? Instead of advertising it, we offer that incentive for people to bring their qualified buyers to your home. So there's half of it is gone there. Now, if the remaining 3%, uh, one third of it goes to my company, the number one company in the world, that brings incredible advantage. And because I have this incredible team of other agents who will help me get your home sold, they'll bring your buyers to your home uh, that I pay that one third of that 1% to my company. And then the final, and then another uh, one third of it, 1% goes to cover my business expenses right? My, my technology, my staff, uh, all the people I need and the expenses I have to do the business. And so that means there's only one, one third of it, only 1% comes to me and my family. And I'm sure you would think it very wrong for me to cut that. Does that make sense? Okay. See, because here's the thing, a lot of people really think all 6% goes to you, but you're the last one to get paid out of that 6%. And without playing victim or sounding like, oh, poor me, you want them to understand that. Here's a great script to do that. So here's the way that the, the, the final thing I want to talk about is the best presentation you can make is to yourself. The most powerful conversation you will have in life is self-talk. You know, life is a self-fulfilling prophecy. That's what Gina and I work with. Gina works with women, uh, women entrepreneurs who are who are trying to deal with their emotional uh, strengths and issues uh, to really get powered up and do the things we're talking about here to be more effective in their work. Uh, and what we know is the, your self-talk matters. So here's the self-talk I want you to say. I am in a skill-based profession and I'm a professional. 
And therefore, I am working at mastering the skills of this complicated, challenging profession. And I practice. I practice hard, I practice long, and I practice often to master my presentation, the way I talk, the way I express myself, and the way I do this business. And I'm increasing my confidence. I'm feeling stronger and more confident all the time. It's a process. You know, sometimes I worry, sometimes I don't feel as confident, but I'm working on my confidence and others can feel this positive energy from me. They can, they want to do business with me. And now I'm taking lots of listings and those listings are selling and I'm following what Gary Keller says. I think big, I aim high, and I act bold. <laughs> there we go. Why list with me? That was great. Love so that. I think what we, uh, Laura Donna asked me if I would do, the, I have a, about a 12 minute presentation uh, on how to build wealth in real estate. Uh, and I've got a PowerPoint with that. But maybe before we go to that, um, and by the way, I want to remind people, remember, I, I can give you that full presentation, plus this next one I'm going to do, plus Dave's favorite scripts. Uh, just send me an email, dave at kw.com. Tell me two or three things that you got out of this, so I get some feedback here. Uh, and then uh, I'll send you those items within a day. I promise you, you'll get those. But if any, Andy, if any uh, questions have come in, I'm happy to respond to them. I think it's all been positive praise. Uh, if anybody has a question right now, they can take themselves off mute if they want to ask Dave. Hey, Dave, okay. the, name of the uh, author of the book, If. Well, it's a, it's a poem. It's just okay. a poem by Rudyard Kipling, a famous poet in the 1800s. Rudyard, R-U-D-Y-A-R-D, -R Rudyard Kipling, <laughs> K-I-P-L-I-N-G. And then, and the title of the poem is "If." By the way, if you send me the the um, uh, Dave at kw Dave at kw com, I will send you a copy of the poem. That's the full. Thank poem. you. Okay, sure. Yep. Um, is your PowerPoint available to us? Yes, I will. I will. Uh, Dave at kw com. Just send that email. Tell me two or three things you got from this, and I will send you the PowerPoint. Uh, and the poem and uh, a little document called Dave's Favorite Scripts, which include some other scripts that I didn't cover today. Thank you so much. You bet. Yeah, and I, I've had the pleasure of hearing the wealth building presentation. I, I heard it at the regional event that you did last week, Dave. It was great. So I'm looking forward to that, that content being shared with the group. Okay. You want me to dive right in to that? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, because it, it takes about, you know, between 12 and 15 minutes. So, so, so here, here is the thing. When I first joined uh, Keller Williams in, uh, in 1996, and I really studied the company, I really asked Gary a very challenging question. I said, Gary, so why are you having owners give away almost 50% of their profits, even though they're taking all the risks and everything, why I have to, to create this profit share pool? What's the goal for the company of the profit share pool? And his answer was amazing. He said, Dave, I care about the financial security of my agents. And I know they can earn commissions, but I know many of them would like to build passive income for the long haul. And he said, I want them to have that opportunity. Now, he said, I want them uh, really to be able to build their own real estate business under themselves without having to leave Keller Williams or without having to undertake the liability or the challenge of building your own real estate brokerage. And so I, that's why I built this system. And the more I studied it, the more I got that feeling. And so let me share with you my view of what this means to build your own real estate company inside the company. One is you have a mindset of financial independence. You're here. The money does matter. You're here to fund your mission in life. And so one of the things to do is think about long-term income, preferably passive income, and what are your choices? Well, number one is you can be a great single agent in, with a real estate career, and that's 90% of people in Keller Williams, even though we promote building teams and all that, many of our agents love just being a single agent. Maybe they have one or two admins, which we highly recommend. And so they just make a lot of money over their career, and if they put it away and save it, then they can have financial independence. Number two is they can build a seventh level MRAI business, just like I talked about with Linda McKissick, where she owns a company that's sending her profits all the time, like any company does, 
and that's a true business. Or you can become a millionaire real estate investor, and we wrote the book on that. You, we're in a perfect place to invest in real estate. Real estate invest, investing in real estate is probably second to owning a business in terms of its wealth building opportunity. Or you can become a professional MREI business, that is where you help investors as well as doing investment on yourself. And number five, you can start your own real estate brokerage, which we would kind of warn you about because it's more complicated than you realize. It's a thin profit margin and it's very fragile with a lot of risk, but we'll take a look at it in a second. And then the other thing is in Keller Williams, you can grow a Keller Williams profit share business. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna describe to you why it truly is a business. It's not a gimmicky thing, it's not a little thing, it's a real, passive income opportunity. Now, we got the permission from Robert Kiyosaki to share his paradigm cash flow quadrants. And he said, you can bring cash flow into your life from four different quadrants. One is you can work for somebody else, be employed. That's what 85, 90% of all people employed by someone else. Or you can be self-employed like we are in real estate. And there's no ceiling on you, but you still, both of those quadrants, you have to show up to earn the money. Now he said, passive income sits on the right side quadrants. You can get that one of two ways, but own a business, a profitable business and own it, not necessarily work in it, own it. Uh, or you can make really smart investments, get your money to work for you. So he said in Keller Williams, this is Gary, this is my thinking with Gary, we offer several opportunities. One, you can be successfully self-employed, but you can turn your self-employed job into a true business. Take it to the seventh level, MREA, where it's just like with Linda, sending her profit income and she's not in it every day. Or you can use this great opportunity to invest in real estate. The millionaire real estate investor shows us how to do that. Or you can combine it all by making the millionaire real estate investor that is becoming an investor or working with investors part of your seventh level uh, real estate practice. Now, what we realized was that profit share, Kellogg's profit share sits over to the right of, of these B&I. In, in other words, what Gary and I said, it's hard to tell whether it's a business or an investment. I invest a little time now and I get paid forever or I make it a business and it pays me forever. But it's the most pure form of passive long-term income that there is. Uh, so let's take a look at, at, at you know, what, what we're dealing with. See, if you were building a real estate company, a brokerage, and a lot of people who step out and try and do this wish that they had seen the, what I'm gonna show you now because they didn't realize it was this complicated or, or expensive. Number one is you have to get a facility, buy a building or a, enter into a long-term lease. And by the way, you don't have any money coming in yet, right? You have to build it out and furnish it. Again, no money coming in, but you're spending it. Three, you have to buy and install equipment and technology. Oh yeah, and that costs money too. And number four, you have to hire staff, sales manager, administrator, receptionist, unless you want to do all that yourself, which of course you don't. And then number five, you have to do what every one of these businesses have to do. You have to compete and recruit producing agents to your economic model against all the other people out there who are trying to recruit agents to their company, including the world's most powerful company, Keller Williams. So you have to recruit people. Uh, number six, you have to deliver on the value proposition. You have to deliver the training, marketing, technology, whatever you promised people when you said they should join you. Number seven, you have to retain professional services, a broker, a legal uh, attorney, accounting. Uh, I mean, unless you want to be the broker, but still you're going to have to hire the other ones. And number eight, you have to deal with all the regulatory agencies, real estate commission, IRS, Department of Labor, OSHA, by the way, they don't care if you didn't know. If you violate their rules, uh, you, the fact that you didn't know what they were uh, doesn't, doesn't hold any water. You're gonna be in trouble. And number nine is you have to oversee it and manage it. You have to hire good people, recruit them, find them. If they don't do well, you have to let them go. You have to hold them accountable. You have to do the budget. You have to do constant improvement of your facility or technology, whatever is needed. So all of these nine things are what it takes to build your own real estate company. And what Gary said is, I don't want agents to have to undertake all this stuff. So in Keller Williams, you can, you can build your own company by doing just one thing, recruiting agents. Now, by the way, in Keller Williams, the way it's set up, you don't have to recruit them. You do what you do in the other part of your business. You refer them. You use your relationships with them, your connection to them, and you refer them to a professional person, an OP or a team leader in Keller Williams, Wherever they are in the whole world, you can, you can, it doesn't have to be locally. And they come in and when they name you as the sponsor, then 
you start to build your profit share company. And it's a real company. So let me look at this, see, because a lot of people don't understand that it's a real company. Let me show you the Dave Jenks profit share company. Okay, founded in 1996. That's when I joined Phil Williams. I've only sponsored six people. That's all. Six people into the company, just six. But over this 20 years, what's happened is in my seven levels that I get paid on, that's how it works. It's a profit share tree. There are 1,176 associates. And by the way, they're all under me. So this is my company. They're all under me. And guess what? Those agents do over, on average, over $250 million a month of closed business. In other words, I have a $2.5 billion company under the Dave Jenks Profit Share Company, and it sends me passive money. I've, I've earned 1.6, almost $1.7 million already from this, and it keeps coming. So let me show you how it works. See, it ramps up slowly, like most businesses do. Went up to 66,000. That was good extra passive income to me. Went it down in a down market to 31. Then it came on its way back up. And you can see in the last five years, I've averaged about $170,000 of pure passive income. I mean, this comes on the 21st of the month directly into my checking account. Actually, now it comes into my LLC. I've set up the Dave Jenks Legacy LLC so that that money keeps coming. And when I pass away, all the other members of that LLC, my wife, my brother, my son, uh, they all have a share of it, right? Out of that LLC. It's an, it's an asset. It goes on to them. When I die, it doesn't stop. It goes to them. It's a true business asset, true passive income. So anyway, that's how days. But see, I'm, I'm not a good example, except to say you re recruit a few people and look what it turns into. But here's the real example, Linda McKissick. Linda came to me in 1999. She said, Gary Keller is having us all do pro formas uh, of our of a, of a business other than listing and selling in real estate. So my, my you know, my husband Jimmy's doing commercial, uh, someone else is doing property management, someone else is doing a mortgage company, a title company. She said, I don't want to do any of that stuff. What, what should I do? And I said, why don't you use profit share? Why don't you treat it like a business? She said, really, how would that work? I said, well, treat it like a business, like have goals, maybe have a staff member focused on that. Uh, and she said, well, how would it work? And I showed her how sponsorship worked and how the distribution of the money came and her eyes lit up. She said, this could be the, mo the most passive source of income I've ever seen. And so here's what's happened. Here we are right now. Right now, Jim and Linda have in their profit share company, their profit share tree, 32 people that they sponsored at the first level, 32, not a, not enough. Incredible number, 32. By the way, because they're a husband and wife, Jimmy and Linda, they're stacked in the tree, meaning they're on top of each other in the profit share tree. So they make profit share at two levels, each one of them, and they combine that money. Uh, and so that's one of the advantages. We, Kelly Williams is very supportive of, of husband wife teams. So the point is, what do they have? Well, they have 9,341 associates in those seven levels that they get paid on. I mean, I don't know the production of that group. It's massive. It's massive. Might be a billion dollars a month. I don't know. But it's big. Now, here's what they get. They have been paid $12 million. $12 million in profit share. Passive, pure passive income. Now, let me show you how it worked for them. See, it, it, again, it grew slowly. It got up to $469,000. Then the market dove. And they're annual earnings went in profit share went down to 244,000. But that's not bad. It's still 244,000 of passive income. And by the way, while other businesses were going out of business, profit share doesn't. See, profit share doesn't go to zero and profit share certainly doesn't go negative. No one in the profit share, there, no one's profit share company is gonna go bankrupt. It just, it, it doesn't go there because it can't go negative. You don't owe money, you just get money. In it. And then you can see as it ramped up, as the company ramped up and grew, that in the last five years, they've been over a million dollars, a million in passive income every month, a million two, a million four, a million five, a million four, and a million four again. I mean, it's just, it's, 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 it's amazing. So, so understand this is a wonderful opportunity for passive income. No financial investment, no risk, no liability, no management responsibility, pure passive income to you.
and your estate and your family. Now, here's, we'd say, that is a business worth owning. Now, here's my encouragement to you. Get a wealth building mindset, get a passive income financial independence mindset, understand and master the referral process. What? So build great relationships with other agents. I'm sure you already have those. Number two is, and by the way, not just locally, anywhere in the country. Be curious about their business. Ask them how they're doing. What are the challenges? What are their goals? Three, share your own career path and the challenge you, you've met. And four, be enthusiastic about what Keller Williams has meant to you. The opportunities, the growth, the marketing, the training, the technology, all those things that have benefited your career. Offer to introduce them to a KW leader. That's just it. You hand them off, you introduce them with your name, with your endorsement, to a team leader, to an OP, and, and your local team leader can guide you if it's somebody you know in another market area. Uh, and then you follow up with them like you would with any referral. How's it going? Great. And to make sure that you are named as the sponsor, you want to follow up and make sure that happens. Follow up with the team leader you referred them to. Follow up with them, you know, just like you would with any referral. And then congratulate them on joining the family. And then for you personally, what I recommend is just track the growth of your profit share tree. It's fun for me to watch it grow and I get a statement every month. And right now, uh, my, my profit share tree has people in it coast to coast, all over the country, even though it just started in three places. It, it, I'm all over it because it's built over time. So it's fun to watch it grow. It's fun to watch where it comes from. And you can even send out thank yous to people in it if you want to, but it's not required and it doesn't, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't make it happen. So just remember this, I would say to you, go build a business worth owning. Those are the options that you have. That was great. You know, I think too, one of the big reminders, Dave, uh, cause there's a lot of other franchises that when you, for lack of a better term, recruit someone in, you're responsible for training them. You're responsible for, you know, their success. Essentially it's a, it's a lot of pressure. Well, the street AW, doesn't do that. The strange thing is when you take, when you take those, uh, those uh, revenue sharing models, right? They really operate like MLMs, right? And I know lots of people in MLMs and MLMs are a very narrow needle at the top of people who make much money, right? Because they're, they're massive recruiters. In Keller Williams, we're not asking people to be massive recruiters. We're just asking them to use their relationship. But here's the thing. If I was in that other company that we have in mind that has made a big deal about revenue sharing, my, you know what my profit share would be instead of 170000 a year? Because I only have six people in my first level, it'd be about 2000 So right away, see, it doesn't last. And also in that other model, when you drop out of the business, when you stop selling real estate, it's gone. And if you leave that company or you retire, it's gone. See, I, the neat thing in Keller Williams is that once you're invested, uh, it goes on to you and your estate forever. It doesn't go away, it doesn't disappear, right? So in a sense, the revenue share is just another way to kind of get extra short-term income. It's not about long-term wealth building. The model of Keller Williams that makes it so brilliant, and it's also based off the fact that we have owners like you who are willing to share 50% of their profits into this pool. Uh, and that, wow, what a, what, a, what a powerful stability factor that is. So yeah, it's, it's important not to confuse this with the MLM type companies that are trying to do short-term rewards and make it look like it's wealth building when it isn't. It's just income generation. It does not last, particularly as, you're, as you retire from the business. Yep. Yeah. Um, this has been great, Dave. Thank you so much. Um, we look forward to the, the next one, which is uh, growing an MREA team, I believe, right? Yeah, it is. It, one of the things that's interesting, somebody asked me, and I, I went to do a, a top 100 agent uh, uh, meeting out in, uh, out in the Northwest. Uh, and, and they said, we, you know, we want you to challenge us. What really, based on what you know about MREA and teams, would you say are the mistakes people are making? And so when I, this, this one is, it's going to be the overlooked secrets of MREA, because a lot of people are trying to emulate what they think is an MREA, but they haven't read it and mastered it. So they, so they make mistakes that cost them money and cost them, you know, headaches and all of that. So we're going to go to kind of to the heart of what Gary and I meant 
when we when we wrote that and how to make it happen. So yeah, we're looking forward to that session. That's gonna be awesome. Uh, and I believe that's in two weeks, maybe, Lord Anna. Does that August sound right? 20th, August 20th, 9 a.m. August, August the 20th. 20th, okay. Be there, rock and roll. And yeah, again, one wait. final reminder to people, just if you want, and I'll, I'll also throw in because, because uh, Andy asked me, I'll, I'll, I'll put the, the PowerPoint I did on the Keller Williams profit share opportunity. Out. So I'll add that in okay. to what you get. Uh, oh, so sorry. that'll be now four or five items that, so oh. Dave at KW.com, be sure you tell me two or three things. If you just say, Dave, send me your docs. I'm going to say, what are your two or three things? <laughs> And we're going to make that happen. Hi, Gina. <laughs> Say hi to my wife. She's she's a master at working with uh, with hi there. women in real estate. Women and in real estate. By the hi, way, Gina. Good morning. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Yeah. Good morning. Nice to meet you. Wasn't that great? That was awesome. She can't say that. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> no, she can't. Say it, and no, I she I'm lucky to, to be in you know, close proximity to all of this every day, so it's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I got your friend request. Thank you. I uh, look forward to following you on Facebook, Gina. Uh, well, thank, you. thank you for accepting, Andy. Well, let's, um, let's wrap it up. Hope everybody has a wonderful day. Uh, just a reminder for those of you who um, uh, maybe have not tuned in on Thursdays at nine o'clock. We do this series called Mindset and Market Share. And the two most important things right now uh, are to obviously stay positive and test negatives, right? Yep. Um, and the second thing is to go take listings. So this was so timely. Um, there is tremendous opportunity out there right now. Um, yes. Those who take listings control the market and we want to help you take as many as you possibly can. So take advantage of these tools. Great, great words today from Dave. Dave, thanks so much. You bet, Andy. We'll see you uh, in a few weeks. Here. All right, everybody. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Thanks, yeah. thanks Dave. Bye -bye. Appreciate it. You bet. Bye -bye. Thank you for setting up, Laura Donna. Thank you.